NC State football has been known for their defense year in and year out. Well, I think it's time for offense to flip the script. You are Locked On Wolfpack, your daily podcast on the NC State Wolfpack, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Wolfpack Nation? It's time to get locked in with Locked On. Thanks for making Locked On Wolfpack your first listen each and every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcast and on YouTube, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's Tuesday episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Place your first $5 bet and get started with $200 back in bonus bets guaranteed. Head on over to FanDuel.com in order to get started. Happy Tuesday to all. As always, I'm Grayson Boone, joined by former Wolfpack defensive tackle Kenton Gibbs. Kenton, I want to start here talking about the philosophies of our coaching staff under NC State football. Something we talked a lot about in the offseason was the potential idea that offense would be a strong suit of this team in 2024. In the last four to five years, we've been known for having a very strong defense year in and year out. And again, referring to Kirk Herbstreet and Greg McElroy, you heard talk about us over the weekend. They referred to that as well. What is going on with this NC State defense? This is not a team that I recognize. When we talked about potential drop-off in the defense coming into this season, we had some questions about the linebacking core. We had some questions, some questions about the depth of the defensive line. And we figured with all these new offensive pieces that you bring in, it might be time that the offense is the group that's leading the charge. We're four games in, and I think it's about time you hit that bat signal. Absolutely, but I think that this is more than the philosophical switch in terms of who leads the offense or defense. Energy needs to lead. Energy. Effort needs to lead. I, more so than defense, it has always been that NC State was a try-hard team. They, even if you don't have necessarily the same athletes as other teams, even if you don't necessarily have the greatest minds ever as your defensive and offensive coordinators, you knew NC State was going to give you everything they had, you know. In the words of that old Shannon Sharp meme, when you lay your head down on that pillow at night, no, I gave you everything. I, that's what you knew you were getting from NC State. This team does not have that. When I played, we played under a different defensive coordinator, Dave Hustle, a different defensive line coach, Ryan Nielsen. And yet, one of the greatest sins there could be was to get a lack of effort. If you got a loaf, which was a lack of effort play, it was what we called them, a loaf. If you were out there loafing, if you got a loaf, that was the biggest sin ever because if you get a mental error, we can clean that up. We can say, okay, listen, when you see this, do that. When you see this key, you know, when you, this blitz, you're supposed to be going here, whatever the case may be. But when you lack effort, that's a choice that you made. That's not so, you never forget to try hard. And, And so be it the offense leading, be it the defense leading, I don't give a damn who leads in terms of offense, defense, hell, even special teams. Let's let's get some boom caster have been said in this thing. One thing that I do know, effort needs to lead. Because what we've seen effort-wise in these first four games has not been anywhere in the ballpark of a team that forget ACC championship. I told y'all after game two, throw that out. Forget you know, everything in terms of, of, hey, do we want 10 wins or all that? You're not going to win enough to even get to a bowl with some of the effort that I've seen so far this season. There has been more loafs than I have ever seen out of an NC State team, not just defense, team so far this season. So all in all, yes, the offense may have to carry this team, but more importantly, the effort has to carry both of them. Additional context to how I arrived at this thought, it was ACC Media Day. It was ACC kickoff in Charlotte, and I was listening to Coach Dorn speak in one of his interviews, and somebody had asked him basically about the expectations of the defense and how their goal every year is to be a little bit better than the year past. And he said this defense would be striving to not let up more than I think it was 30 points or 31 points or something like that. Through four games, you have you've gotten blown past that mark twice in embarrassing fashion so with all that being said i know there's still eight games to play and as typical of an nc state team they get better as the season goes on 
from what I've seen out of this defense and the linebacker play, missing run fits, missing tackles, just missing assignments all over the field, I'm starting to get the inclination that the defense, it might just be it is what it is. Right. And when that is the case, your offense is going to have to win you ball games, not supplement the defense, but flat out win you football games. I know Tony Gibson is very familiar with a Big 12 type of football in that there's not a whole lot of defense and a lot of those games get into shootouts. I truly believe that if NC State wants to stay competitive and, in a sense, salvage this season, they're going to have to find themselves in those type of shootouts. Your offense is going to have to go out there and lead the charge. If your defense can't stop a cold, if you can't get off the field due to broken tackle and explosive plays and missed assignments, it doesn't matter who you play. It doesn't matter if you play Tennessee. It doesn't matter if you play Wake Forest. If you can't stop the explosive play and get off the field, you're going to get burned all year long. And so if that is the case, if that is the identity of this defense, the offense is going to have to basically carry the team on their back. This offense should probably move closer to like an air raid type offense. That is where we've had the most success, both out of the offense as a whole, but also with CJ Bailey. Throwing the ball on Saturday against Clemson, I felt comfortable because he's hitting his targets. He's on time, he's on target, and he looks comfortable back there. Not to mention... The offensive line has been at their best in pass block, not run block, but pass block. Last season, when we got demolished at Duke, Coach Dorn and the rest of the team talked about simplifying things and throwing out the things that don't work and only sticking with things that do work. It's already time to do that here this season. Do what you do best, and so far, that has been passing the ball to open up the rest of the field. You talk about the defense and how they've looked in two of the four games, but I want to take it a step further against power four teams yeah against power four teams in your last three appearances you've only held one team under 30 and that was by a hair with that being said if we're sticking to strictly this year you have not played a power four offense that you have held to under 50 points And I know what you're thinking. Well, Kenton, those are two of the most high-powered offenses in the nation. One of them is. Grayson. Well, here's the question, Grayson. Didn't we see both of these teams play other power four defenses already this year? Haven't we seen that? We did. Quick question. How many points did uh, Clemson put up against Georgia? Three. Well, no, that's not fair. That's Georgia. That's a buzzsaw. Okay. How many points did Tennessee put up against Oklahoma? 25. 25. If I may, I think there's a small caveat. Their game plan changed as that game went on. They didn't risk Nico making mistakes. But, yes, your your point stands. They didn't blow out Oklahoma, even though they do have an explosive offense. my, My point is this. Both of the offenses that you have seen have been at least slowed down. Correct, yes. By other defenses. Ours? Doors blown clean the hell off. Clean the hell off. So, you know, I mean, again, it may need to be an offense lead thing. But, again, I want to see energy lead before anything else. I want to see guys sprinting to the ball like their hair is on fire. I want to see guys straining to get their – hold their block for just half – just that smidgen of a second longer because there are so many plays where – we're just that one little we're just that one little guy getting off his block away. There are so many plays where we get a receiver wide open, but the offensive line misses a block. We're so many plays where all right, everything finally looks good, and then the receiver fumbles. It is a moment right now where I don't care who leads, it needs to be effort and focus. And if you give me those two things, I'm fine living with it with whatever the results are everywhere else. I'm fine with C.J. Bailey making freshman mistakes because he's a freshman. I'm fine with that. I'm fine with the linebacking court being who they are because, let's be honest, Isaiah Moore, Drake Thomas, Peyton Wilson, they are not walking through that door. Let's be very honest and clear about that. I'm fine with that. But you need to be the best version of yourself. That's, that's all I would ask for out of this team. And again, that's not to take away anything from our opponents this year. But like I have constantly said, what I've seen from this team 
will not suffice. In terms of, I thought it was just the execution. And after going back and rewatching some of these games, the effort has been so piss poor. It's like, yeah. You're not executing. You're not giving up. What the hell are you doing well becomes the question at that point. Yeah, unfortunately, it's been bigger than just execution. It's been missed alignments, missed assignments, missed run fits, not finishing tackles. You name it. It has gone very poorly for this defense. And so, yeah, as a whole, the umbrella idea, there has to be way more intensity, way more attitude, way more effort, way more leadership if something's going to change. The defense has to get better. There's no no doubt about that. And I suspect at some point they will because Tony Gibson is that good of a coach. Despite how people feel about him right now, he is that good of a coach. They will improve as the season goes on. But until that happens, I think you're going to have to see some offense winning you some ball games. Coming up next, we're going to get into a whole lot of nothing or a whole lot of something for a quick word from our sponsors. Our first sponsor of the day is 5-Hour Energy. 5-Hour Energy fixes tired fast. Whether you have a long list of to-dos for work or a list of do-it-yourself projects to tackle at home, take a 5-Hour Energy shot so you can check everything off of your list. If you're like me, you always have a large list of projects for the home. When you get your supplies for that project, don't forget the most important supply, a 5-Hour Energy shot. With zero sugar and a convenient portable size, it's the perfect pick-me-up for getting stuff done. The 5-Hour Energy website has flavors galore like watermelon, tropical burst, grape, berry, and so many more. There's a flavor for everyone. Make sure you try them all. On the site, you also have the option to build your own 12-pack or a 24-pack. You choose the flavors, and they're delivered right to your front door. If you go to 5hourenergy.com, and that's the number 5 and then hourenergy.com, get some 5-Hour Energy product today, and you can use my promo code LOCKEDONCFB in all caps, to receive 20% off of your order. The offer is only valid from now until September 30th on one order and cannot be used with other promotions. The code is not good on subscription orders, so make sure you get on over to 5hourenergy.com today. Middle portion of our Tuesday show. Now time for a whole lot of nothing, a whole lot of something. Three topics. We'll tell you exactly where we stand on them. First one here. The two losses that we've already suffered here in 2024 have a bigger combined point differential than all four of last year's losses. 2023, all four losses combined 54. The two in 2024 have 65 combined points. Whole lot of nothing, a lot of something. Whole lot of something. We are not piling on a team that, you know, some people are going to feel like we're beating a dead horse and all that. This horse is still alive and needs to be beaten. There needs to be more media accountability. There needs to be more people saying, what the hell are we doing in year 12? Year 12. I'm not mad. I'm not going to lie. I hate losing in general. hate losing. Not one of those guys like, oh, I'm a good loser. If my kids are bad losers, I'm not going to be mad at them for it. Hey, (laughs) you don't like losing. So what? You're a chip off the old block. With that being said, not being competitive. In year 12, not being competitive, not even like you don't even sniff a win. And the worst part about it is the biggest point there. There's a bigger point differential than all of last year combined. And one of those teams called the dogs off. One of those teams said in the second half, all right, all right, let's go ahead. And hey, do we got any fans that are season ticket holders who happen to have kids in school? Go ahead and put put old Tommy John in. Go let, let's see what he's got. You know, he hadn't practiced with us yet, but let's throw him in the game. I'm telling you, this is a whole lot of something. I am very concerned. And again, there was a reason I said expectations shift in real time. I've said it on the positive last year after the Duke game when they started picking it up and they started winning and winning and winning. Expectations shift in real time. Expectations right now have shifted in the opposite direction. It's a whole lot of something, and exactly what you highlighted, the non-competitive factor, that is the most by far irritating point, from my opinion. Being blown the blank out by Tennessee and Clemson to the point where it is just not even a game for the majority of the 60 minutes, that is baffling. And when you look at 2023 compared to 2024, 2023, the roster was nowhere near as good as we currently have now. But that team 
played better football. How in the world has that happened to this team this year? That is so beyond current comprehension right now that all of us are spiraling here in the middle of the week. How in the world has this team become so lost at some points on both sides of the ball when you had championship aspirations? How was the mark missed this badly? That is shocking to me. Just a complete non-competitive feeling to both the Tennessee and the Clemson game. That alone is just, man, like what, what are we actually doing here in year 12 with the biggest aspirations you've had during the Doran tenure here? That is a complete loss of words, a whole lot of something. Second one here, in this Clemson game, Dakari Collins, Wesley Grimes, Noah Rogers, Keenan Jackson all had just one target. Justin Jolie, five targets. Casey Concepcion, 10 targets. Whole lot of nothing, whole lot of something. Whole lot of something because you're not seeing success with the targets that you are distributing. Whole lot of something because you are sitting up here and having 10 targets for KC that amounted to a total of five receptions for 40 yards. Wesley Grimes, on the other hand, one for 23. Keenan Jackson, on the other hand, one for 15. Dakari Collins, on the other hand, one for 13. Noah Rogers, on the other hand, one for 13. It is clear to me, I love me some KC. Love me some KC. He's a bad dude. He's a, Listen, I will sing his praise about how special he is until the sun rises on the, of the west and sets on the east. I will. But with that being said, you have talent all over the field. And what's the point of having all this talent that puts defenses in a cash 22 if you're like, LOL, JK, I'm going with the first option every time. Pick your poison. JK, I'm going with the first poison every time. Well, hell, eventually they're going to come up with an antidote or an antidote. That's, that's what is happening. That is what is happening. So with that being said, go back to the drawing board and say, Casey, you are our guy, but we may use you as a decoy a bit more. We may use you to get a uh, Noah Rogers over. We may use you to get a Joe Lee open. We may use you to get uh, a uh, Keenan Jackson, Terrell Anderson. We may use you to get those guys open. And it's not a, a front to you where we don't think you're good. It's that teams are now saying, stop 10 and we'll win. Well, guess what, 10? You know, we're going to use you as that decoy. And then when things open up and they do make you, they do go back to one-on-one -on -one and all that. Oh, then it's time for you to cook. But at the moment, teams are very clearly keen on you. Where you go, they go. And we just keep giving it to you while, where they're going. So, you know, you, you need to adjust that. A whole lot of something. Last year, when we were getting a little bit concerned about the predictability factor with using KC so much, it never really came into play. This year, teams have the book out on KC and they're taking him out of the game. However, we're not making any adjustments. We're still trying to force it to KC target after target after target, most of which are coming like directly at the line of scrimmage, and we're picking up three, four yards, and we're ending up having to punt. And we were so excited about that pick-your-poison factor in the offseason. Four games in, haven't seen it. You have Justin Jolie, who has been your most consistent pass catcher on this team, only three targets. We need him up in probably like the 9-10 range because he's been carrying the yak factor, carrying most of these receptions. You need to get the ball to your best playmakers. Noah Rogers, his, his underutilization is crazy to me. Eight catches in four games with the talent that he has. Crazy. And yes, we know KC is our guy, but we also talked about a lot in the offseason. If you can successfully use your other guys more, KC then gets better. Exactly. Then they, can't, they can't hone yeah. in on KC and take him out of the game. That's what you have to get to. Four games. I don't know how we haven't arrived there yet. And who was our leading receiver in the Louisiana Tech game? Dakari Collins. Exactly. You have the ball players. It's not. And, and this is what's so frustrating about this team. Because it's the effort. It's the coaching. It feels like, you know, in the words of Kehlani, baby, it's the everything for me. Because it's every time I look up, it's something new where it's like, I want to give a nine credit because there have been moments where he schemed things up beautifully, but I'll be damned if I say, Hey, there are other guys. It is legal to pass the ball to guys without the number 10. That is, it's a part of football. We can do it. There's not a limit. You know, this ain't mad. They don't have a play cool down of like, Oh, 
wait a minute, did you just go to Jolie? You can't go to him again. Did you just go to college? You can't go to Did you just go to Anderson, Jackson, et cetera? So, you know, it, it is what it is, but there needs to be, again, distribute the ball, man. Distribute the ball. Let your playmakers make those plays. KC ain't your only playmaker anymore. I get it. Uh, trust me, I would – with some of the pass catches we had last year, I get the PTSD of going to other guys. I understand. This ain't that, and that ain't this. The third one here, the line for NC State and Northern Illinois opened at 11.5 point favorites of the Wolfpack and then quickly dipped down to just 6.5 point favorites. A lot of nothing, a lot of something. I, <laughs> I don't know how they even this. got to 11.5. That's my main gripe. I, I hate that we're doing this. I hate Because <laughs> anybody who knows me knows I hate betting. I hate Vegas. I hate all of it. I, I really do. I know people are going to say, oh, Ken, you don't know fun. You're you're the fun police. Well, damn it, hand me my, my hat and baton and all that because I'm here to be the fun police. He's right here, officer. Yeah. Hey, get him. That's me. I'm the guy getting him. Uh, but this is actually a whole lot of something. Yeah. What, what is causing that line to drop that quickly, literally overnight? Literally. I could tell you what is happening that immediately a team that just lost to Buffalo, people are like, Oh, they're going to cover. They're going to cover. Oh, we got to get in on this dog. We got to get in on this. And honestly, I, I also wonder a little bit, what made you make the line 11 and a half? Because what has NC state won a game this year against a, a really, I'm not even going to make any qualifiers. Has NC State won any games this year that left you convinced to say, hey, they will win this game by double digits? I'd say no. They're also 0-4 against the spread, so you have that going for you as well. But, yeah, it's a whole lot of something because, one, again, no idea how you arrive at 11.5-point favorites based on everything we've seen so far. You get completely dismantled at Clemson, and somehow you're still 11.5-point favorites over a team that went to South Bend and beat Notre Dame. That was fishy from the get-go. But then, even possibly more intriguingly, dips all the way down to just a touchdown favorite in a couple of hours. I'm imagining that's because people were nuking Northern Illinois to cover this football game. That's why it dipped so sharply. But can you blame them? I mean, if it were 11 and a half, it's dirty money, but I would consider picking Northern Illinois to cover. I'm sorry. That's probably not good for me to say on here. But hey, am I lying? Are there not a lot of people that feel the very same way right now? It's it's very concerning. So you see what betting has done? It's turned my boy Grayson into a degenerate. It's turned him into an NC State hating degenerate. Sometimes it's dirty money, but I'll tell you what, it all counts the same. But Blood no, I money, mean, but he still counted. <laughs> <laughs> NC State now being only seen as a touchdown favorite over Northern Illinois. Yeah, it's all hands on deck. Much like Coach Jordan has said. I wouldn't see any single game as a gimme. We've already talked about this, and it certainly won't be the last time this week. Northern Illinois is not afraid of NC State, probably not in the slightest. They truly believe that they're going to come in and beat us. It's up to NC State to do something to prove otherwise. Vegas looking at this game is only a touchdown difference. Hard to disagree. A whole lot of something. Coming up next, we're going to round out our Tuesday show discussing defensive end Red Hibbler no longer being on the team roster. This comes after a quick word from our sponsors. Our second Tuesday sponsor is FanDuel. NFL fans, you can start the season with a big return on FanDuel, America's number one sports book. When you get a hunch in the middle of a game, you can check out the latest stats, view live play-by-play, and so much more on the very same page that you're placing your bets. You can get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place just your first $5 bet on the app. Head on over to FanDuel.com in order to get started. America's number one sports book. Last couple of minutes of our Tuesday show, now discussing the big name news that came out over the internet on Monday. Defensive end Red Hibbler is no longer listed on NC State football's roster. Now, this comes as a little bit of a shock. However, it's important to remember you are at that four-game redshirting mark. Now, I'm not saying that Red is redshirting because there has not been any details released on that, but I wouldn't exactly be surprised if he's the last name you see. And it won't be just an NC State thing. You'll see this across the country. I think Notre Dame had a defensive back uh, redshirt and enter the portal today as well. But 
Shocking news here. We had high hopes for Red Hibbler here in 2024. He was our leading sack man last year in 2023. He's gotten off to a little bit of a slow start. And I'd be remiss if I didn't mention there was a couple very questionable effort plays that I saw against Clemson. I'm left saying to myself, how did we end up here? How did we end up in this moment to where, you know, we're we're asking ourselves, man, our leading sack guy from last year, who I thought, if he takes the next step, and who I said publicly, if he takes the next step and gets consistent against the run, boy, him and Van are going to wreak havoc off those edges. We just don't see it. But this is what I mean when I say the senior leadership has not been there. Devin Van has been there. But who else? Who else as a senior has shown up? Who else as a senior has led? If anything, this moment says we're seeing dysfunction from our seniors, from our elder statesmen, from the guys who've been in the program for a few years. Now, it's disappointing. It's disheartening. I wish Mr. Hibbler all the best in his future endeavors. It's, it's just not the way that you want to see this in. It certainly brings up a lot of interesting questions, and I'm not going to speculate, but you start to wonder, it's like, well, we've heard so much about this NC State culture. Is there a crack in that culture? Did he quit? Did the coaching staff ask him to leave? What exactly is going on here? Is he redshirting? We don't know. But to see this come across on Monday, a couple different plays on Saturday against Clemson, he looked to not be giving 100% effort. That is the quickest way to get your rear end removed from the field. I can promise you that, especially because of that culture that Coach Dorn and the coaching staff has built here. So to see it go down like this, it's sad. And I think it raises some question marks as well as the defensive line depth because that was a unit that's not exactly deep to begin with. And so you pull out what we saw as a fairly valuable body, not exactly sure how to feel about the depth now moving forward. And Coach Dorn said that Isaiah Shirley will be kind of stepping into that spot, receiving more playing time. Those remarks certainly make a whole lot more sense now. So with Shirley stepping up, Red Hibbler is now out. The defensive line unit has kind of struggled here out of the gate. It might be tough sledding from here on out. You just hope that they can get it together. And at the end of the day, I will say about Red Hibbler the same thing that I'll say, I said about the team at large earlier. Effort has to lead. Effort has to lead. To me, that is the standard more than anything else in NC State. To me, more so than any other defining factor, Being a guy that tries, gives it all you got, leave it all out, let it all hang, give it everything, that has to be the defining factor. And once you lack that defining factor, hey, happy trails, man. It's been real, it's been fun, but it ain't been real fun. See you later. Yeah, you you reach the situation now where it's next man up. If he's not going to give you that effort, you got to find somebody else that will. There's no time to sit here and dwell on him leaving You just got to find a way to get better now. That is the only thing that matters from here on out. The current guys that are on the field, they have to get better now. And so inside the Murphy Center, whoever is left on the team, they got to rally around each other. Now is the time. Unfortunately, it was last year against Duke. This year, it's right now after Clemson. I hate that it's so early, but it's now or never. If you want to salvage the rest of your season, saying salvage in week five is crazy, but I'd I'd be lying if I said otherwise. If you want to salvage the rest of your season, it's time to rally around your guys, fix the small things that lead into bigger things, and get better now. If you want to quit either mentally, physically, or literally removing yourself from the roster, then so be it. We'll find guys that want to be on the field now, and that's really where we're at. That'll do it for us here on Tuesday. As always, thank you all so much for joining us. Be sure to hit that like button. Drop your comments in the comment box. Tell us what you think about potential philosophy adjustments moving forward with both the offense and the defense. Tell us what you think about Red Hibbler no longer being listed on the roster. Anything else you have on your mind, drop that down in the box as well. Be sure to hit that subscribe button if you have not already. We'll see you right back here tomorrow on Wednesday for more. Until then, go Pack. Go Pack.